So now let's have a look at actually getting and removing WMI instances and using WMI instance properties. So first, I'm going to call get WMI object, specifying the win32 underscore share, and I'm going to pipe the results to format table. And I'll format a table with the caption path status properties nicely auto-sized. And there you have it. I can also process this array manually. I get an array of share names, and then for each share name in that list of shares, I can print out the caption and the path with the suitable widths, uh, as you can see there in the example. And there I get a table of all those shares. I can also use uh, a couple of methods to get an individual share instance. In this case, I'm going to use late binding returning all the objects, all the Win32 share objects, and then use the where object commandlet to filter out just those Win32 shares whose caption matches the string remote admin. So I do that, and then I can print that out. And as you can see, the remote admin share on this machine, Windows 7, is called remote admin, that's its caption, and it points to C colon backslash Windows. I can also use the filter parameter filtering out, in this case, those shares whose caption has the title Remote Admin. This is always going to be a little bit faster. And I can print that out, and as you can see, it gives me the same result. Now, if I have a, a single instance, such as a single instance for Win32 BIOS, I can use the name of the uh, variable here, $BIOS, and just specify the property. In this case, I'm going to return the BIOS's manufacturer, which in this case is Dell. Now, if I want to change a property value, well, I can do that pretty easily, too. So, if I have a look at the logical disk whose device ID is C colon, that's my C drive, you can see here I have the C drive, and the volume name is system brackets win7. Now, let's change it, but I want to make sure I, I retain the old name. So I go off and I assign the value of that uh, commandlet to a, a variable called DRV. I save the old name, and then I assign that DRV's volume name to a silly value. Now in this case, when I do that, I'm only actually changing the value in memory. In order to persist the change, I have to call the put method. When I do that, I get a result back, which tells me it's, it's worked. Show me the path to the object, and it's, it hasn't given me any errors. So if I have a quick look, I can see that the volume name is now that silly foo bar bar foo. I can change it back easily enough, change the value of the volume name in memory to old, and put it back, and double check that it's there, and sure enough, I've returned the old value. Now, I can also use the set instance, set WMI instance command it, to change a property. So, in this case, I'm going off and getting the volume name again. In this case, I'm getting the Win32 volume whose uh, caption is C colon backslash. And I get the uh, path uh, out of that. Now, that path is the WMI path that I showed you earlier localhost, root, simv2, etc. And then what I'll do is I'll get the old label name, in this case, the label of that machine, and I'll change its name now to something something else. So in this case, I'm changing a label name to Foo Foo Foo. And as you can see here, when I do that, I get that value returned. And I can now check that it's actually changed by going and getting all the volume names. Okay, you can see the C colon backslash volume has a label of foo foo foo. And I can change it back, and as you can see, we've changed it back to its original name. 